All right. So what I'm going to do is start with the end. So I want to show you kind of where where I ended up, um, <clears throat> what, you know, what our goal is, and then kind of build up from there, show you how to how to build something like this. Right. So what we're looking at, the example scenario that I chose uh, to use to demonstrate lists <clears throat> is a risk register. So um, I know that several boards are keeping risk registers in Excel today. Um, and they were looking for ways to, to improve upon that, to um, be able to you know, escalate risks um, when, when key pieces of data happen, things of that nature. So, and I know there are other tools for, for, um, for tracking risks, but a lot of them use Excel to do it. Um, so this is just one example. Um, just ignore the, the names of the channels and, and teams over there that you know, those are just the ones I use for testing. So assume that you would uh, name it appropriately. But but what we're doing here is using instead of using Excel and I'm going to go into all the reasons um, why you would use lists rather than Excel for um, for keeping track of data and managing it. Um, is uh, is a list of risks and um, and it's all meaningless data, of course, but uh, it's just for illustration purposes. So you can see, you know, you can quickly see at a glance the color coding that shows, um, you know, the status of each of these risks, how critical that that risk is, um, some scoring, and again, some conditional formatting on that scoring and uh, the level of risk as well. So. Um, so what I'm going to do here is actually um, bring up uh, another person. I have to create a new risk as somebody else. So um, so this is just a different account, same same list, and I'm just going to create a new item real quickly. Um, test for training, um, some description. Make this a normal one, and I'm going to set the status to in progress, importantly, and uh, just set the impact and the date, date reported, review date, then, oops, and save that. Okay. So now that we've um, saved this one, actually, I need to set the level of risk as well. Sorry, level of risk. OK. Right. So um, now that we've set that, uh, that we've done that, over here on the channel, one of the things that I've done, so well, let me back up a second. So this list, you'll notice that it's very wide. And one of the advantages of using lists over Excel is that you can create different views on the same data that are easy to switch to. So I can say I created this view, which is um, much shorter. Um, there's also a view that is um, a calendar view. So you can see the one that I just, with my misspelling and everything, shows up on the calendar view as well. Now I didn't have to, I didn't have to create this view. It's just available because there are dates in the list, and it says, "Oh, there's dates in this list," um, so we can offer we can offer a calendar view of that. Um, and you know, creating these different views is very simple. I can show that too. Um, but one of the things that I've done here is also on top of the list, which we'll get to some more details of it. Um, I created a Power Automate that what it does is look for changes in that list and says, hey, if something is, um, first of all, it had to be um, at the executive level, I believe. I made that a condition. And, um, and then um, I can't remember what the other condition was, but basically, I can set some rules to say, hey, if these things happen in these pieces of data on a new on a new list, then we need to trigger something um, in the team, a post in the team. And what I have here is a post that says, you know, here's the description, here's some key data points around it, and I get the opportunity to actually change the status of the um, of that uh, item from here. So I can I can update it. Um, I can update that list from here 
and then actually I wasn't supposed to set it at, I was supposed to change it to change it to in progress using this thing. But anyway, the point is um, back on the risk register, it would actually change that status to whatever I, I had it set to right from right from team from the team's chat. So you can make these notifications interactive as well. So, um, so anyway, that's that's the end goal. So now let's let's go back to the beginning a little bit and talk about what uh, why you would use a list and go into some detail about how how they work. Um, and the way I'm going to do that, interestingly, is so here's a blog post um, by some friend of Microsoft, I guess, um, a blog post that was really good, actually, um, a whole list of 22 reasons to use lists rather than Excel for things. Um, and and in general, actually, I've got a, um, let me paste this in here. I'm gonna paste into chat a little table that I built um, that I've been sharing with people. It's, it's a very simple table, but um, describe some of the ways in which we are used to working. Um, it seems that uh, the more I people I talk to within the NHS, the more I realize it runs on email and Excel. Like that's that runs everything. It seems, um, you know, besides maybe track care, um, everything else seems to be run in email and Excel. And there are better ways to do those things. So, um, so that little table might be uh, might be interesting or helpful to you. But uh, but this blog post did a really good job of walking through all these things. So I'm actually going to use this to kind of walk through uh, lists. But while I was here, I thought this is a really ugly looking like I don't want you staring at this. It's harder. I just wanted to show you a feature. I don't know if you knew about this in um, in Edge. If you click on um, the reading view, it's up here at the URL up at the top. If you get this reading view button, if you click on that, Notice all the ads and all of his stuff goes away and you're just focused on the content. So um, I just thought it was a handy, um, a handy thing. I use this sometimes to just focus on the content. Anyway, so what, um, what is better about lists? So first of all, um, and I'll zoom in here a little bit too. Okay, so so in Excel, for example, you only have, you can only track numbers, dates, and text. That's really the only types of data that you can, that you can uh, use here. With a list, so if I go back to, let me go to a, a kind of a clean slate here, and let's create a new list. So I've added the list app to uh, Teams, and the way you can do that is just add a tab here and click on lists. And that'll that'll add the app. So now I can um, create a list. And let's just start with a blank list this time and say, um, you know, first list, whatever. And create. I want to show you that adding columns is as simple as this. And so instead of just so in Excel, you only have, like I said, text, numbers, and dates. But here you have lots of other options. Um, so you have images, links, and it treats all of these things differently. So simple yes, no switches. Um, and, and it can treat these things in, in particular ways. People, so rather than just having text with somebody's name, you might spell it wrong or get it wrong or whatever, and you can have a field. So I'll show, I'll show you how that works. So I can add a person field to say, um, you know, assigned to or something like that. Um, and you can decide whether you can select people, uh, whether you can select groups or not, um, show their profile photos if you want, etc. Right. So I'm going to just say yes and show you that when I uh, create a new item, um, you know, first entry. And so when I'm that it's using people lookup just like it uses in your email, right? So I can actually select a person so we know exactly who that is. Um, and you, even the profile photos come through in your in your visual of the list if you want to. OK, so that's an example of of uh, different kinds of, of data types. 
Um, validation. So data validation to reduce data entry errors. You can have um, both at the column level and the row level, you can have uh, some validation um, features. So um, I, I won't show the detail on that one because it can get it can get complicated, but but you can do that both at a column and at a row level. Um, mandatory columns. So we can decide. So if I go to create a column here and, um, you know, a score of some kind or whatever, um, under more options here, so I can set, you know, whether it's a currency or, you know, format it and set the decimal places, et cetera, have a default value. Um, but I can also um, require that this column contains information. So that way I can make make it mandatory um, and in fact if I've got an entry that has uh, a required field it's going to flag that up like like it just did here okay um, calculated columns so you just saw that recently I'll go back to the other um, to the other example here the list the one that I'd already built um, to show you that um i believe the well i could make the review date calculated based on the date that it was reported so you could have a, a short formula that says um um you know from from the date reported the review date should be you know this date plus 10 days so you could make that um and then this one is a calculated column already that's just adding these two numbers together so whatever your formula is, you can bake that in and um, and make that a, a calculated column, just like you do in Excel, right? Um, all right, sharing. So I, I don't actually agree with the blogger very much on this one because you can actually share Excel files. Um, you don't have to send copies around as attachments. Um, but if you do, then and there's always one person, right, who sends it off, you know, sends the email off as an attachment, then you've stopped sharing and now there's no longer one source of truth. Um, whereas here, you know, especially if you're working as a list within a team, you know exactly who it's shared with. It's the members of the team by, by default. Um, it, it is shared with the members of the team. Now, you can actually go in um, because lists are actually a feature of SharePoint, believe it or not. So not only are the files in a team stored in SharePoint, so is the list. So lists have been a feature of SharePoint for um, eternity. And um, so you can see I can open up, just like you can open up the files in SharePoint, you can also open up a list in SharePoint and you get a little bit more functionality. So this is where I would need to go in order to uh, do some more advanced configuration um and set up some of that automation stuff that i was showing you earlier but um yeah so sorry where was i i was going to show oh sharing right so from here um you can also um uh you can yeah so you can manage access to the list specifically so i could create um you know so sorry let me go back to that Manage access, right. So I can share the list with a different set of people than the team if I want to. But by default, everybody in the team has access to that list. Um, and but, but I can share that out with with others if I need to. OK, let's see. And there's, you know, and there's just that one source of truth then. Um, data from multiple people. So I'm not sure what he's getting at here, to be honest, when he says each person sends a separate file. But the, the, my point is that this is this is a co-authoring experience, if you will, a co-editing experience. It's very easy for you know multiple people, hundreds of people, if you need to, to all be entering items here at the same time um, or editing them at the same time. That's that's not an issue. Um, oh right. So if yeah, so if someone does like if some i think what they're trying to get at here is like collating data so if you're sending out a spreadsheet and um you know people are 
are entering it in different versions of the document, then obviously that becomes a problem and, and, and that's not an issue with lists, of course. Um, preventing people from editing each other's data. So, um, so this is a real common um, challenge with uh, tracking things in Excel. Whereas, you know, you have you, when you have one file, of course, you can't just, um, you know, separate out and make make it so that you can only change these rows in the file. You'd have to have separate files and then try to combine them, and and that's just really complicated. Um, from lists, um, you do have to go into the advanced um, settings here, but if I go into the list settings and then go into um, advanced, I believe, right? So you'll see here, actually, it's probably really hard for you to read it. Um, let me zoom it in a little bit. There's just two settings that you can, you know, two radio buttons here, click, click, done. And now, uh, I won't save these changes, but what it says is that um, I can only see in this case, and in this case, I can only create and edit items that I have created as a, as a user. So if you've got a particularly sensitive list where you want people to contribute to a list and you want to track those things there, um, then you can make it so that uh, you know, but but you don't want them to see other entries in the list, then you can just set these up um, and you can set them up separately, right? So I can make it so that everybody can read all the items on the list, but they can only edit their own stuff. So um, so that makes it much better than um, than Excel. Go back here without saving. OK. Um, right back to here. Column level security. So, so we were just discussing essentially row level security. So lists also can have column level security in that you saw how I could create different views, right? So this is the all items list. I'll just make this bigger. The all items list, the brief version of the list. What you can do is make a different view that has a different set of your overall columns and then use what's called audience targeting to say, if you're in this audience and this group of people, you can only see this view. But if you're in this group of people, you can only see that view. So there's this audience targeting feature that you can use to, to do that. I'll go back to here. Um, lookup, um, lookup is very easy. That's just a column type. Um, VLOOKUP in Excel, uh, you might be familiar with that, um, but it can be um, it can be tricky, um, whereas looking up, um, you know, a lookup is just a column type in in lists. So I can go in and say, let me go back to my my new one, first list here, and I can say add a column, and where is it? Huh? I think I might have to go into the advanced features on that one as well. Let me try that. Oh, more. Yeah, because there's more types, right? So here's the lookup one. Um, so I can say, you know, here's my lookup one. And and then I just go down and I specify, um, you know, which list. So I can go from this other one and say, um, you know, which column from that other list am I pulling in from, right? So I can I can easily just create a, a column that looks up from another list. All right. Uh, change from edit to view, always, always easy. Uh, I think you've probably seen that as we go through. Um, exporting to Excel. So um, you might have seen on any of these lists, uh, I think you have to be in, be in um, SharePoint view. Let me go back here. Yeah, so you might have seen right up here, there's this export to Excel or to CSV. So if you do need to, um, you know, export this in a format that you can then PDF or, you know, share out in some different way, then that's that's really simple and easy to do there. Um, in fact, you can also uh, create an Excel file that is still connected to your list. So uh, it still has a data connection to the back end. So you can actually be editing um, the data in Excel and it updates the list. So you kind of get the best of both worlds in, in a sense. 
um, uh, trigger actions. So this is what I was showing um, in the demo at the beginning, where um, you actually have to do some heavy duty programming to do that in Excel, but in, but in lists, it was really simple to do that, right? So, uh, so let me give you another quick example of that. So if I go, um, not, uh, it's actually not under automate. <laughs> Let me clarify that real quickly since I clicked on it. Um, so automate, the, unfortunately, this menu is really just about getting email notifications. So you could create a rule such that, you know, when something is entered with, you know, this status that so-and-so gets an email. That's all this one does. Uh, if you go under integrate and power automate, then you're, you've got all kinds of automations that you can do. So, um, so you can start an approval flow process, um, you know, request uh, approval from a manager, or add an Outlook task, you know, in to do uh, when when something you know, or add something to Planner. There's all kinds of automations that you could do um, off of a list with Power Automate. Okay. And then, yeah, notifications. You saw the demo of that one. Um, pivot tables or Power BI. So this one's interesting. So, um, so you'll notice there's the integration with Power Automate that I've talked about. Power Apps can be used. This is actually, if you've you've heard of Power Apps, maybe I've demonstrated them in the past to you. Um, but uh, the 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 actual. Um, inception, if you will, of, of Power Apps, where it came from was a desire to customize the form that you um, that you get when you create a, a list item, right? So right now, if I go new, I get this form and it kind of is what it is. But if it's a complicated list, then you might want to have a very different user experience for that form. And you know, straight from here, you can click Power Apps and customize form, and then Bob's your uncle. I mean, you can customize away what the form looks like that's tied to this list. Um, similarly, then there's Power BI, and so with one click, I can just say, visualize this list, and it creates for me a dashboard, a visual dashboard for this. I can go in then in Power BI and um and edit this and you know put whatever visualizations i want if i want this to be um you know vertical instead of horizontal or an area chart or whatever i can make those changes and uh and then publish that to the list and name the report um what was it oh wrists so um so let me see, go back to the list here. Oh, versioning. So there is actually field level versioning with, with an audit trail um, for lists, whereas with Excel, you, you're just got versions of the file. That, that's, that's all you get. Um, custom views, I've already showed you that. Custom permissions, um, I've showed you a bit of that. And then reminders, we've talked about that and protection to some extent. Um, yeah, yeah. So, for example, if you wanted to um, on this on this risk score, right, the fact that it's a calculated column means that I can't edit it or break the formula or anything like that. It's just display only, so it's not editable. OK, so lots of reasons to go there. Um, and what was I going to talk about next? Right, so. How do you get started? Um, as as you saw here, I you know created a very simple list from scratch this way, um, but there are a couple of other ways to create them as well. So I'm going to create another list here. Okay, so I'm going to create a list, and um, there are a couple different ways. So I can actually um, uh, create from an existing list. So if I click on an existing list. It's giving me lists that I have access to. So if I can come over to this, um, let me pick one. I don't know which ones of these actually have lists. So here's one here. Um, 
it has an events list. Oh, that looks interesting. And so I'll create a list based on that. Doesn't impact their list at all. It's just taking the schema, if you will. So it's the what are the columns? What are the data types of those columns? And and generates an identical list that's empty that, that has that has no data in it. So but these that assumes that I have access to those lists. So let me go back and give you another example. If you wanted to, for example, start from Excel, so you say, hey, we've been tracking this stuff in Excel, let's try tracking it in lists instead, um, then you can upload a file, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and upload a file. Where is it? In my downloads, there's a risk register template. This is what I used to create the list that I've been using for demonstration purposes. And what it's doing is it's going in. Now, if you're going to do this, you need to make sure that your Excel file is set up so that the data that you're interested in importing into your list um, is actually in a table format. If you know Excel at all, you know what I'm talking about. Basically, it's going to look for areas of your file that have been formatted as a table. Um, so if it's not, do that first before you import it. And then when you do, it pulls this in and it does a fair job of trying to figure out like, what um, what each of those fields should be. But at the top of these, you can make a change to that. So for example, this description, it says as a single line of text, I probably want to make that multiple lines of text. So let's do that. Same with the controls that are in place. Um, this one, status, is actually a, a set of choices, right? And you don't get that opportunity in Excel, but here I can say, hey, this is actually a choice field not a uh, text field. So then what it'll do is create this field with all of the values that it sees um, in your data as potential choices, right? Um, this one is actually a person. So this is an example where I probably want to choose not to import it and just recreate that as well, because it doesn't know that these are people. It's just looking at data in an Excel spreadsheet, right? So it doesn't know that those are actually people. So you might have to recreate that one. Um, this one is a date, but it's coming through as a number, so we can just change that to date and time, and there you have it, right? Um, same with this one, et cetera. So I can just go through all of these. Um, this one was the calculated column. We would probably have to recreate that one. Um, I mentioned that before. Anyway, so you'd go through and do this. You know, these are... Um, fields that you would not import because they're specific to the to the um, previous list, right? So if I just click next, I can now give it a new name. Um, new test, risk list, um, set some icons, however I want to, that to show up in my team, and it creates the list. And so it's it's actually importing the, the data that was part of the table as well, so that you don't have to copy paste that over. So that's um, that's starting from Excel, um, and then there's a couple of other ways to start to call out. So let's do one more list. So you'll see at the bottom here, there's actually a set of templates that Microsoft provides. So these are out of the box. Um, they're actually pretty slick in terms of uh, they've done a lot of conditional formatting and things in there. So if you go to create one of these, just know that you can you can then edit it from that point. So you can you know rename or delete columns if they don't apply. It's just a starting point and a rather attractive, pretty starting point, uh, if I do say so. So those are some templates from Microsoft. I'm sure we'll continue to add some there. Um, and then uh, then the other option that I wanted to show you was from your organization. So you also have the opportunity as an organization to decide this is a template that we want everyone in NHS um, Airtur and Aaron, for example, to uh, to use. And so this is something that the tenant admins have to do. So these are these are the the Office 365 admin people have to do this, but they can actually create a template and make that available to your organization, and and it has it'll provide exactly the same thing. So we can just say use that template and the same thing um, so that you don't have to um, to recreate it every time. Right, are we doing on time? We're about half an hour. 
Um, OK, right. So I just wanted to make a point here that uh, at this point that this is what it's what is lists not a solution for. So I would not recommend using lists, even though you can use the lookup table that I was talking about before. Um, I would not recommend it as a relational database, right? If you need a truly relational database, then you're talking about SQL Server or Dataverse. So there, there are other options for that. So I wouldn't recommend it for that. If you also need really granular level security, um, in other words, um, we were talking about row level security, so I can only see you know this row if I create it. But if your scenario is, I should only be able to see this row if my uh, title is, you know, if if I'm a clinician or you know if I have this particular title um, attached to me, or if uh, I don't know, it, you know, if there are some really sophisticated rules around the security, I wouldn't recommend lists. Um, if it's anything more complicated than just either row or column level security, um, and then also if it's if we're talking about enterprise level scale, so. Um, what I mean by that is, so the, the functionality you're seeing here, um, so you can go up to millions of rows, but what happens is as soon as you get over about 5,000 rows, um, the search function, you have to plan it very carefully because um, it won't render a view and by a view i mean any of these views here it won't render a view of more than 5000 items so you just have to plan those views carefully um and any you know any search requirements that you would have uh, have to be planned carefully too so it does it does run the risk of um of breaking down if you go to a massive scale um, but you can put retention on any one of these items in a list. So, if, for example, you want to use it in a scenario where you might end up with millions and millions of entries over time, but at any one point in time, you only need, you know, 100 or 500 items in your list, and the old ones can just be dropped off in time, then lists will be fine for that. So it's only when you get to massive amounts of, of data that it, that it starts to break down. Or, you know, other technologies would be better suited for it. So, so um, that's my kind of high level tour of lists. It's becoming more and more prominent. In fact, it was just announced um, um, recently that, uh, you know, lists will be uh, trying to figure out where or you would see that when we go to SharePoint. So this um, global navigation will be coming to SharePoint. Um, if you don't have it already, I can't remember if you have it yet, but um, this global navigation, so that anywhere you are in SharePoint, you'll be, be able to access your recent files um, or news items that are coming from SharePoint. They're, they've just announced that they're going to be adding a My Lists view here. So it, it's getting more and more visible um, throughout Office 365 and getting more um, prominence. In fact, there is there's now a separate app that you can use to download lists and take them offline. Um, so I haven't even played with it yet. It's pretty new, but um, but yeah, there's more and more investment going into going into lists for all the reasons I've been explaining.